What we're going to be going over here is solving for multiple product cost volume profit analysis in terms of dollar amounts here. So what we're going to be uh, solving for is some targeted net income before taxes and net income here after taxes in terms of dollar amounts here. Okay, so for cost volume profit analysis, the basic concept is this. This is where your total revenues are going to equal your total cost plus some profit. So we're looking at it in some basic, basic of equations here that we're going to go through and follow through for a problem. So our total revenue here, TR here, would equal our total cost, TC here, plus some profit. And we'll just say that, look at it in terms of net income here before taxes. That'd be some targeted amount here. So our, looking at it here, our total revenues equals our total cost, which is our total fixed cost, plus our total variable cost, plus some net income here before taxes. So we just rearrange the equation here and move our total variable cost over to this side of the equation or subtract it from both sides here. So we end up with our total revenues less our total variable cost or that difference equals our total fixed cost plus some profit here, net income before taxes. So our total revenues less our total variable cost, that is really our total contribution margin. And that's gonna equal our total fixed cost plus some profit here, net income before taxes. So what we're gonna be concentrating on when we're solving for these uh, uh, the cost volume profit in terms of dollars is this total contribution margin. We're gonna boil it down to that amount, that number here that we're gonna be dealing with. So we can just, for our calculations here, we'll just go in our total revenues equals our total fixed cost plus our total variable cost here plus some targeted net income here before taxes. So our total revenues is gonna be our S represented by our sales here, and that's going to equal our total fixed cost. And then our total variable cost, it's, going to, it's represented by a sales times some variable unit cost divided by unit price here. Again, plus some net income here before taxes. So we could solve for this here, but what it all boils down to is this. Uh, our, we're going to have to determine our weighted contribution margin ratio here, and that times our sales here is going to equal our total fixed cost plus some net income here before taxes. So that's what we're going to we're going to be working with. We're going to call it a weighted contribution margin ratio here, and that has to be in terms of dollars. So when we're talking about uh, contribution margin ratios, we can really look at in three different terms here. So a contribution margin ratio is really on a unit basis would be some unit price less our variable cost divided by the unit price. So this is gonna give us a ratio here. It's not in dollars, but it's in terms of dollars. And then we could further look at it. The contribution margin ratio would be some total variable cost, less our total, vari uh, total, total revenues, excuse me, less our total variable cost, again, divided by our total revenues. And then it could be uh, looking at it in these terms, some unit price times some quantity here, less our variable unit cost times some quantity, again, divided by the unit price times some quantity. But nonetheless, we ha if we're going to work with dollars here, we have to determine our contribution margin ratio in dollars here. And we did it here by dividing, looking at it by dividing a dollar amount here and a denominator for each one of these, uh, uh, each one of these solutions here for our contribution margin ratio. We have the units up here, but then again, if we just took our price, less our variable cost, it would just be based on units. But when we're, we're dealing with dollars here, we have to divide it by the dollar amount here. And you can see how we factored that in. Okay, so let's look at uh, moving down here. So again, we must solve for the problem in terms of dollar amounts here. And then we know our dollar amounts will be able to convert it into units, but in terms of dollar amounts. so. What we would do here, and we're gonna go through a problem here, we're gonna just have two different products. When we're talking about multiple products, you'd have any number of different products here. But we're gonna just have product X1 here and product X2 here for our example here. And then for each of the products, we have to know a unit price here and a unit variable cost. And then we have to know what they call the mix ratio. That is how much of each one of our products here we're actually selling. So for our uh, problem here, we're gonna look at for product X1, we're gonna have a mix ratio here of 60% or 0.60. That is, we're selling 60% of our products here are being sold as product X1. In product X2, well, the remainder, they would be 40% here, 0 0.40, the mix ratio. So uh, we have to determine that mix ratio for each of our products here. And that's really based on 100% here. So product X1, 60%, product X2, 
40%. So the next thing we have to do, we have to come up with our con contribution margin ratio here based on dollar amounts here. It's not really a dollar figure here, but the ratio is based on dollar amounts. So what we're gonna do here for our contribution margin ratio, again, it works off what we had for that contribution margin uh, ratio here was really some price, less our variable unit cost, again, divided by our price. So for product X1, what would that be? We have a price here, $4, a variable unit cost here, $3. So we can go down, we can calculate our contribution margin ratio. That's simply four, our price of $4, less unit variable cost, $3, again, divided by $4, our price here. So that is gonna give us 0.25 here for X1. That's our ratio here for product X1. Okay, so then for product X2, our unit price is $8, variable unit cost $5 here. Okay, so for product X2 it would be $8 unit, our price, less $5 variable unit cost divided by the price here of $8. So that's gonna give us a contribution margin ratio here of 3.75. Okay, so we gotta figure it out for product X1, product X2, our contribution margin ratio. And knowing our mix ratio for each one of them, now we can come up with the weighted contribution margin ratio. And really it's the sum uh, sigma here, E is represented as sigma, or the sum of the contribution margin ratio here times the mix ratio. And we sum them for different products. So uh, uh, for weighted average contribution margin ratio for product X1, it was 0.25 times the mix ratio of 60% uh, or 0 0.60 here. For product X1, product X2, what is it? 0.375, the uh, contribution margin ratio times a mix ratio of 0.40 or 40%. So just sum those up. So your weighted average contribution margin ratio is gonna be 0 0.30 here. So that's the weighted average contribution margin ratio based on dollar amounts here. It's a unit amount, but it's based on dollar amounts. And this is what we're gonna use here for solving for our uh, our quantities here in terms of, or what we're looking at in terms of dollars. Okay, so using this weighted average contribution margin ratio, now we can go and we can solve for our, our different situations or solve our problem here. Okay, now let's go through our problem here where we're gonna be solving for our multiple products, X1 here and X2 for our net income before taxes and our net income here after taxes when this targeted net income here is stated as a percentage of our sales dollars. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to establish some rate of return here as a percent of our sales. And we're gonna be given that in our problem here, but just understand what that would be here. So our rate of return here as a percentage of sales would just be say our net income before taxes or our net income that we targeted net income here divided by our sales dollars. Okay, so uh, solving for, our, uh, we're gonna be looking at our net income here before taxes. That would simply be our, the rate of return here on our sales times our sa total sales here. So what we're gonna do here is we'll just substitute the rate of return R times our S here, or the rate of return on our sales here for the desired net income before taxes. So the equation that we'd be working with is that weighted contribution margin ratio times our sales dollars here. That's gonna equal our total fixed cost plus some net income here before taxes. So our general uh, solution here for our sales dollars simply would be our total fixed cost plus the rate of return here on sales times our sales dollars or our sales amount. That's gonna equal the weighted, the weighted contribution margin ratio, the average weighted contribution margin ratios. But the, the, rate, the rate times our sales dollars here, that's substitute as our net income here before taxes. So we can go back to our equation here that we'd have to be working with to solve for those uh, net income before taxes, the number of sales dollars that we'd have here for these multiple products. So our weighted contribution margin ratio here uh, was 0.3, or that was that 0.3 here times our sales. And that's gonna equal our total fixed costs. And let's just say our fixed costs are $300,000. Then we'd have to add to it that what we have substituted in here for our net income before taxes, that was our rate of return on sales, 15% or 0.15 here. That was given to us here times our sales. Okay, so now we just have to solve for our sales dollars here. Just uh, subtracting both sides of the equation here by 0.15 here, showing it here. So we would subtract, uh, move that 0.15 sales over this side of the equation. I'm showing it it over here. So subtracting that from our three tenths of our sales, our 0.3 tenths here of sales, 
is going to equal 0.15 sales. So that we have the 0.15 here sales was equal to $300,000 here. So uh, just divide both sides here by 0.15 or 15%. So our sales is going to be equal to 300,000 divided by 0.15 or 15%. So that's going to be $2 million here. Those are the total mixed dollars here for the sales that we have to generate for both product X1 and X2 here. I'm showing them as S1 and S2. So to determine how much would be allocated for each product, we just take that total mixed sales here times the mix ratio for each. So for S1 or X1, the mix ratio was 60% or 0.6 here times $2 million. That's going to equal $1.2 million allocated to product X1 here or S1 as I'm showing. And then for S2, same thing. You just take the total mixed sales dollars of 2 million times its mix ratio here, and that was 0.4 or 40%. So that's going to give us $800,000. Okay, so you see what's going on here. You just take, uh, you have to determine your total mixed sales dollars here, and then you just allocate them based on the different mix ratios. And then uh, just remember the weighted contribution margin ratio, that was just a this WCMR here in green, that was just the weighted average contribution margin ratio that we calculated earlier. Okay, so to determine the number or the quantity of each product, we determined here in dollar amounts, but we can determine the quantity of each product just by making the division here, the $1.2 million here divided by the unit price here for product X1 here was $4, the unit price here four dollars each so that gives us that division gives us three hundred thousand here for product x1 that we'd have to sell and then for product x2 here same thing it uh it's total sales dollars here we allocated at eight hundred thousand divided by eight dollars that unit price here was eight dollars each so that's going to be a hundred thousand dollars okay so you see how we did it here for our percentage sales here looking at net income before taxes and given amount here fifteen percent of our sales dollars, so that's how we did it. Okay, so now let's look at just the second uh, item here. This is we're gonna have to earn, earn given here, a net income after taxes, we're gonna have to earn 9% of our sales dollars. So going through the same uh, same formula here, same equation, but what we're gonna do is we'd, it, we're gonna have to base it on our net income here after taxes. So what you wanna do here, you wanna look at your net, net income after taxes, it's just gonna be one minus the tax rate here, times our net income here before taxes. So solving for our net income here before taxes, just divide both sides by one minus the tax rate here. Yeah, and net income after taxes divided by one minus the tax rate gives us our net income here before taxes. And just say, for example, here, our tax rate is sitting at 40%, so one minus our tax rate is gonna be 60%. And then our general solution here for total sales would be just our total fixed cost plus instead of a net income here before taxes, we'll substitute in here net income here uh, after taxes divided by one minus the tax rate. And then you just divide that total amount by the uh, weighted average contribution margin ratio here, and that's gonna give you your total sales dollars here, total mixed sales dollars. So going back to our problem here where we gotta earn this 9% uh, net income after taxes, we wanna earn 9% of our sales dollars. So just going through our equation here, to weighted average contribution ratio times our sales here is equal our total fixed cost. Uh, but now we're gonna put in our net income here after taxes, and that's just gonna be uh, based on our rate, our rate of return here times our sales dollars divided by one minus the tax rate here. Okay, so solving for that here, that's by weighted average contribution margin, 0.3 here times our sales here is equal our total fixed cost of 300,000, plus then we can solve for uh, this portion here. It would be our rate of return here, we're talking about 9% of our sales dollars, so 0.09 here, 9% of our sales S here, divided by one minus the tax rate is 0.6. And when that all works out here and you uh, solve for your S here, you're gonna come up with 0.15 S here is going to equal $300,000 or 300,000 here. It actually equals our total fixed cost here, 300,000. So S divide both sides by 0.15 here, 300,000 divided by 0.15 here is equals $2 million here. And then S here is again, just take your total mixed uh, sales here of $2 million for X1 or S1 here times its mix ratio of 0.6 here. Again, gives you one point. 
to $1,200,000. And then for S2, same thing, to take the 2 million here times its mix ratio, our 40% here is allocated for product X2, that's gonna be $800,000. So all we've done here is we've just determined our total sales dollars that we had to have here based on the net income after taxes of 9%, and then we just allocated it based on the different mix ratios here. And then for X1 and X2, the quantity of each, just take your total uh, sales dollars allocated for each divided by the unit prices we went before here. For X1, it was $4 here, uh, but in dividing 1.2 million that was allocated here. That was 300,000 units here for X1, or quantity of 300,000. And then for X2, it was just 800,000 here divided by its uh, sales price of $8 each. So that gives us 100,000 here. Okay, so that's what we had to. Uh, this is basically this is how we have to go through it to determine our net income before and after taxes based on some sales dollars here. So this weighted contribution margin ratio that had to, we have to use that based on uh, calculated based on sales dollars. It's a it's a unit measure here, but it was initially calculated based on sales dollars here to make our calculation. Okay, so that's how we would go about solving these different problems here when we're talking about. Uh, turn something as a percentage of sales dollars. So we had to first deal, and we were doing it based on those multiple products. We had to come up with some weighted contribution margin ratio here based on sales dollars. And then after we did that, we could just make our substitutions here to determine how much would be allocated to each of the different products. Okay, so that's basically how we'd go about doing these problems here when we got these multiple products and we have to determine some targeted net income here stated as a percentage of sales dollars.